one. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall any person be denied the equal protection of the laws. Section one is only one sentence. It consists of two parts, what lawyers call the due process clause, and number two, what lawyers call the equal protection clause. And yet, section one is so powerful that even if you deleted the entire Bill of Rights and remained only with section one, every single Filipino citizen would still be entitled to the entire panoply of human rights enshrined in our Constitution. Ganon katindi ang bigat ng Equal Protection Clause at ng Due Process Clause. Ngayon, the business for the day is the Due Process Clause because yesterday, prosecution wanted to present a PAL officer and presiding officer ruled that because bribery is not alleged under Article 3, then prosecution cannot present that PAL officer. I support that ruling. In fact, I insist on it because of the due process clause of our Constitution. The due process clause is so important that, as I said, in the view of certain constitutional experts with tripartite democracies like ours all over the world, tanggalin mo ng buong saligang batas, iwan mo lang ang due process at ang equal protection clauses, meron ka ng protection ng buong saligang batas para sa karapatan pang tao. That is how important due process is. Ngayon, hindi lamang iyon ang provision ng ating konstitusyon, kung hindi. Sa konstitusyon mismo, hindi sa rules of court lang, sa konstitusyon. The Constitution, Article 3, which is also the Bill of Rights, going down the rights, Section 14, Paragraph 2 provides, In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation against him. That is due process. That is how our Constitution defines what due process is. You must inform the accused, any accused person, in a criminal proceeding or in a semi-criminal proceeding such as ours of the nature and cause of the accusation against him. And accordingly, the rules of court provides. Section 1, Rule 115, Rights of the Accused. Section 1, in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall be entitled to the following rights, letter B, to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation against him. So the rules of court is nothing but a reflection of an actual constitutional duty imposed explicitly by the Constitution. That's why we cannot admit the testimony or any other evidence of an officer, of any person, of any witness, concerning an allegation which has not been included in the complaint or information, or as in this case, which has not been included in the articles of impeachment. Merong mga, merong mga biritero dyan, seeking a false note, na magsasabi, eh bakit ang diferensya? Tisigo lang naman yan. Di, isingit mo na lang doon. Hindi pwede yan. Because that's violative of the due process clause of the Constitution. This is more or less virtually the same situation during the President Estrada trial. When I voted against opening the second envelope, unless the prosecution first amended their information. My basis was due process of law. Ganun na rin yan ngayon. Meron tayong tisigo dito. Ngayon doon sa President Estrada trial. Naalala nyo? Opening of the second envelope, binilang kami isa-isa. Tapos nagalit ang publiko, well, at least part of the public, against me dahil nagboto akong huwag niyong buksan yan. Actually, yung boto ko, pwedeng buksan, pero amendahin o baguhin mo muna ang complaint or information para mabigyan ng due process clause ang akusado so that he can be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation against him. Ngayon, nabuksan bandang huli. Yung second envelope, wala pa lang laman na incriminatory doon. Kaya, what was all that fury about, that pretended anger at the pretend violation of the constitutional rights of the prosecution at that time? Ngayon, maliwanag sa ating saligang batas at sa ating rules of court na hindi ka dapat magbigay ng ebidensya, testigo man o anong mga exhibit mo, kung hindi mo sinali doon sa iyong akusasyon, sa inyong complaint or information, ang particular na krimen na ginawa ng taong yon, Krimen according to the penal code. Kaya, 
So my castle, our Supreme Court has ruled, particularly in Andaya v. People, a decision in 206, no matter how conclusive and convincing the evidence of guilt may be, an accused cannot be convicted of any offense unless it is charged on the inf in the information on which is tried or is necessarily included therein. To convict him of a ground not alleged while he is concentrating his defense against the ground alleged would plainly be unfair and underhanded. The rule is that a variance between the allegation in the information and proof adduced during the trial shall be fatal to the criminal case if it is material and prejudicial to the accused, so much so that it affects his substantial rights. Okay, fatal yan. Kaya dapat dahan-dahan ka lang kung gumagawa ka ng complaint or information mo or your articles of impeachment para sigurado mo na lahat ng ebidensya mo may presenta mo ng bista dahil nakalista doon. Pag wala doon nakalista, hindi pwede. That's the rule. People versus Flores, 2002. The right cannot be waived for reasons of public policy. You can, if you have the right, you cannot even waive it. It is imperative that the complaint or information filed against the accused be complete to meet its objectives. As such, an indictment must fully state the elements of the specific offense alleged to have been committed. For an accused cannot be convicted of an offense even if duly proven unless it is alleged or necessarily included in the complaint or information. And not only that, but our Supreme Court also had he held in the case of ELO, the Court of Appeals, 1960, on the effects of a fatally defective information. A substantial defect in the information cannot be cured by evidence, for that would jeopardize their right to be informed of the true nature of the offense for which they are charged. Yun lang mang gusto kong sabihin noon sa Estrada Impeachment Trial eh. Ang dami kasing sawsawero doon eh. Mas marunong pa sila sa nag-aral ng batas. Paragi silang sasabing technicality, technicality. Exactly. The law is exactly a body of technicalities. That's why you need four years of law school plus one year of the bar in all a total of nine years para malaman mo kung ano itong mga technicalidad na ito. Dahil kung wala tayong mga technicalidad na iyan, wala tayong tawag na rule of law. Wala tayong tawag na due process of law. Kaya itong mga iba na nagdudung-dunungan, akala mo kung marunong pa sila sa abogado sa dating hukom o sa mga hukom ngayon nakaupo. Kung ano nang mga pinagsasabi, so filled with hubris about their ignorance. Kasi kursunada nila. O kaya meron silang intuition. O kaya meron silang conscience. Para bang ang konsyensya nila mas malakas ng sa konsyensya ng lahat ng tao sa buong bansa. Yan ang problema sa, ba sa bansa na ito. Nagdudunong-dunungan. Plus, the rules of court provides, Section 5, amendment to conform to or authorize presentation of evidence. You cannot, as I said, to repeat the rule, you cannot present evidence unless it is included within a charge that is listed in your complaint or information. Ngayon, kung gusto mong presenta ng bidensya at hindi nag-object ang kabilang panig, ah, pwede yun. Dahil wala naman pala silang objection eh. Pero kung may objection, this is what the rules of court says, if evidence is objected to at the trial on the ground that is not within the issues, made by the pleadings, the court may allow the pleadings to be amended and shall do so with liberality, etc. Under this ruling, our Supreme Court till 2005, in the case of Kagungon v. Planters Development Bank, under this section that I've just read, if evidence is objected to at the trial on the ground that it is not within the issues made by the pleadings, the court may allow the pleadings to be amended freely when the merits, when the presentation of the merits of the action will be subserved thereby and the admission of such evidence would not prejudice the objecting party in maintaining his action or defense upon the merit. It is thus clear that where, it, where there is an objection on the evidence presented because it is not within the issues made by the pleadings, an amendment must be made before accepting such evidence. If no amendment is made, the evidence objected to cannot be considered. That is the categorical, categorical ruling of our Supreme Court. In the 2004 case, Argente v. Provincial Sheriff, 
The complaint should state the theory of a cause of action which forms the basis of the plaintiff's claim of liability. The office, purpose, or function of the complaint is to inform the defendant clearly and definitely of the claims made against him so that he may be prepared to meet the issues at the trial. Yan ang batas. Ngayon ang problema natin, marami kasi ng mga kibitsers mahilig magabugaduhan. Eh kung gusto nyo magabugado, mag-enroll kayo o kaya magbasa kayo tungkol sa batas. At hala, criticize batikos ng batikos na wala namang base sa batas natin. Gusto ba nilang gagawin sa kanila? Gusto nilang gawin sa ibang tao? That is the basic question. Akala mo kasi, nakikipag-fishballan tayo dito. Hindi. Malagang ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. Hindi tayo nakata nakatayo sa tabi ng fishball vendor at bumili ka ng fishball stick mo at bumili din ako ng akin tapos sa kain tayo doon. At maglandian tayo tungkol sa ating mga opinions sa batas. Magbasa kayo ng batas. In short, Within the discretion of this court, we can have a continuance because that's what the law says, to allow the prosecution, if it makes the proper request, to amend their complaint. If they don't, then they simply cannot present the witness because he will testify to a matter that is not alleged in the article of impeachment. That was my position in the Estrada impeachment trial. That is the very same position I take today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Major Floor Leader. Mr. President, we are ready to um, uh, 